स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट बेसिस एंड डायमेंशन दिस आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स सो हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई द बेसिस फॉर अ गिवन वेक्टर स्पेस एंड व्हाट इज द डायमेंशन ऑफ दैट बेसिस सो दिस आर द थिंग्स दैट वी विल लर्न सो यू नीड अ बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ व्हाट इज अ वेक्टर स्पेस ऑलरेडी इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट वेक्टर स्पेस and uh, what are the conditions and how to solve problems related to vector space now let's talk about basis so what is a basis a linearly independent spanning set for a vector space v is called a basis for v so what are they saying there are two important terms here one is they are talking about linearly independent vectors and they are also talking that those vectors should span the given vector space so I mean, already you know what are linearly independent vectors. So, what now? What is the meaning of spanning the given uh, set? Let's learn about that. Once again, what is basis? A linearly independent spanning set for the vector space V is called basis. Maybe most of you might not understand the definition, but when I take the examples, definitely you will understand them. Now, what is the dimension? Now, once you know what is a basis, so basis contains some vectors. what is the nature of that vectors they are linearly independent not only linearly independent they span the entire set so what is the meaning of spanning the given vector space i'll try to explain so once you know what is basis for a vector space look at the definition of uh, dimension the dimension of a vector space v is defined as the number of vectors in any basis so there is a vector space for that there will be some basis now look at that basis basis is basically set of vectors now in that basis how many vectors are there that number is nothing but dimension for that basis so the dimension of a vector space is defined to be the number of vectors in any basis for v so basically the dimension is defined for the vector space what are you supposed to do to find the dimension first find the basis once you know what is the basis for a vector space count how many vectors are there in that basis that is nothing but the dimension i'll take certain problems and i'll explain you before that once again i'm trying to highlight two important terms one is you need to check for linearly independent vectors and then they should also span the vector space so here is the first example i have two vectors in the form of in the form of 1 0 and 0 1 and i want to know whether this two vectors form a basis for r2 so what is r2 students r2 is simply a two tuple vector so what is r2 r2 is a two tuple vector or you can also geometrically if you want to think r2 can r2 is actually a two dimensional uh, space two dimensional space so now how to decide that so first thing is i will check whether these two vectors are linearly independent or not so how do you check it so one is through determinants let me check the determinant 1 0 0 1 the determinant of this is 1 clearly not equal to 0 meaning by the two vectors are linearly independent now some students what they feel is once they find that they are linearly independent they immediately jump to the answer that yes sir they are basis sir they are basis sir now what did we say they should be linearly independent and they should also span the given vector space so let me explain you what is the meaning of spanning the vector space yes the given vectors 1 0 and 0 1 are linearly independent there is no doubt about that so what is the next thing that i have to check are they spanning r2 are they spanning r2 what is the meaning of spanning r2 now you randomly take a vector which is in r2 for example let me take a vector called 2 3 clearly 2 3 belongs to what r2 this belongs to r2 where does this vector called 2 3 lie so two units away from x axis three units away from y axis maybe let's say this is 2 and let's say this is 3 this is where that 2 3 vector lies correct so can you express or 
can you get this vector using these two vectors? Yes, I can get them. So, how? Look at this 2 times 1, 0 plus 3 times 0, 1 will give you which vector? 2, 3. That means the linear combination of these two vectors is giving me uh, this vector. Not only this vector, are you take any vector. So, let us say arbitrarily, let us take x, y. So, clearly x, y belongs to R2. So, will the linear combination of this, can it generate the vector called x, y? Yes, it can generate. How can you generate it? It is so simple. x into 1, 0 plus y into 0, 1 will give you which vector? x, y. So, now what is the conclusion? The given vectors are not only independent, but they are also spanning the entire R2. You can take any point in this R2, you can express that point as linear combination of these two vectors. So, come on students, a linearly independent spanning set for vector space V is called a basis. Now, 1, 0, 0, 1, it is a set which contains two vectors, forms a basis, forms a basis for R2 students, forms a basis for R2. So, what are the two things that I have verified? One is, are they independent? Yes. How did you verify that? By determinant approach. What is the next thing? Are they spanning the R2? Yes. Like I randomly took the vector called 2, 3 and then I also arbitrarily took the vector called x, y. The linear combination of this 2 is giving or it is covering entire R2. Hence, this forms a basis. Come on, what is dimension? of this vector space called R2. The dimension is simply the number of vectors present in this basis. So, what is the dimension students? The dimension in this problem is simply 2. The dimension is 2. So, let me solve this problem. They give two vectors 1 0 0 and 0 1 0 and they are asking will they form a basis for R3. So, now you can pause this video and then see what is your answer and then you can compare with my answer. So, what are the two vectors? The two vectors are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. I want to check whether they are linearly independent or not. So, earlier we have followed the determinant approach. Right now, the determinant approach may not work. The determinant approach may not work. Why? Because when you club them, it is not giving you a square matrix. So, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0. So, I have clubbed them. I got a matrix. I want to know whether these two vectors are linearly independent or not. Determinant approach is not working. So, now when determinant approach is not working, rank approach will help you. What is rank of this matrix? So, already it is in row echelon form students. Below this, you have all zeros. Okay. So, below this one, you have all zeros and the zero row is placed at the bottom. The rank of this matrix is 2. Rank indicates the number of linearly independent columns or rows. So, I want to know how many columns are linearly independent, how many columns are linearly, there are only 2 columns in this matrix and the rank is also 2. Therefore, the given columns are independent. That means the given vectors are linearly independent. Let us write the first point, the given vectors 1 0 0 and 0 1 0 are linearly independent. Now, many students come to a conclusion that okay, linearly independent, therefore, they form a basis. No, no, no. What did we say? A linearly independent spanning set. It has to span in this particular question, they are talking about what? They are talking about R3. In the previous question, they are talking about R2. So, now you can, you will try to generalize. Sir, will it always be about R2, R3, R4, Rn? No, no, no. It can change from problem to problem. Sometimes it can be like this. So, they might talk about a set of vectors which satisfy Ax equal to 0. They might talk about this. Okay. So, because this is a homogeneous system now. It represents or the set of solutions which satisfy x equal to 0 also forms a, a subspace or a vector space. 
So they might talk about this, but here they are talking about R2, they are talking here about R3. In general, they can talk about anything. But what is a common mistake is students always feel that the discussion is about R2, R3. No, no. It can be about any set of vectors. So for examples per example purpose, I have taken R3. In the next example, I'll cover a few more things. Now, will this two vectors form a basis? That's what I have to check. I have said they are linearly independent. So what is the next thing? The next thing is, will they span R3? So for example, let me take a point called 1, 2, 3. Can you get this vector? Can you get this vector as linear combination of this two? It's not possible to express this vector 1, 2, 3, which is part of R3 as linear combination of this two. You can check it. It's not possible. Some students might say, sir, 1 into 1, 0, 0, sir. Okay, sir. And then 2 into 0, 1, 0, sir. Okay, sir. Now, what about how do you generate this 3? Suppose if you add this, you get only 1, 2, 0. So, when you take the linear combination of this, the third component is always 0. You will not be able to get a non-zero value here. So, what's the conclusion? They are linearly independent, but they do not span R3. Like I said, I took the linear combination. Here I was supposed to get 3, but I'm not getting 3. Now you can try, you can try any, you can try in any way. You will never be able to express 1, 2, 3 as linear combination of these two fellows because these two components are always 0. Any scalar multiplied with 0 will always be 0. The linear combination will never generate a, a non-zero value there. That means I'm unable to span entire R3. Let us write that note point. 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0 does not, does not span, does not span R3. Hence, not a basis. So these two vectors are not forming a basis, not a basis. So the next question is then, sir, which three vectors or how many vectors or what are those vectors which can form basis for R3, sir? I can give you those examples. So you can take the columns of a 3 cross 3 identity matrix students. For example, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. These three vectors forms a basis for R3. They form basis for R3 forms a basis for R3. Like this, you can extend for R4 also. If you want to know a simple basis for R power 4, you can take the columns of a 4 cross 4 identity matrix and you can generalize. Uh, for R power n, if you want to write a basis, then the columns of a n cross n identity matrix will form a basis for R power n. Sir, all the time, will you take only uh, the columns of an uh, uh, the columns of an identity matrix not not needed. Identity matrix looks so simple. If you want to generate a basis for R three apart from these, you can do this. Take a matrix whose determinant is not equal to zero. Take a three cross three matrix whose determinant is not equal to zero. Can I generate such matrix? Let me check. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, uh, let's put some 1, 0, 0. Let's see what is the determinant of this 1 into. So can I expand the determinant? Can I expand the determinant using this, this row? Yes, I can do that. I can expand. If you want, you can put some non-zero elements. I have just uh, randomly taken that. I need a 3 cross 3 matrix whose determinant is not equal to 0. Randomly have taken this. So let's expand the determinant using the third row. So it's like 1 into minus 1 whole power. This element belongs to third row and the first column and then into a minor which is uh, so how much is that? It is 12 minus 15 correct 12 minus 15 and then 0 into the cofactor 0 into the cofactor. So this is giving me something which is not equal to 0. Yes, I can now say that these three columns 
this three columns will form a basis students this three columns will definitely form a basis for r3 not only this you take any three cross three matrix whose determinant is not equal to 0 those columns will form basis for r3 similarly for r4 similarly for r power n so far the discussion was about r r power 2 r power 3 or r power n okay so every time it need not be about r power n so they might talk about some other set as well now let's see this question this question is a very old gate problem from computer science so looks like it was asked in 2007 consider the set of vectors defined by x where x belongs to r power 3 such that x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0 uh, where x is x1 x2 x3 transpose which of the following is true so they gave this two vectors and they say that this two vectors is a basis for the given subspace x they gave again the same two vectors and they say that they are linearly independent but it does not span x hence it is not a subspace it seems and then he says x is not a subspace for r power 3 none of the above i hope the discussion is going well like students in the earlier problems it was about r2 it was about r3 and then we generalized what can happen for r power n but in the present question it's not about r power 3 it's not about r3 it is about a set which satisfies x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0 i can also express this set okay so what is this about this is about you have a set of vectors where x satisfies first of all x belongs to r power 3 it seems okay it's a vector in r3 such that x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 0 they're talking about this set so what could be the basis for this set first of all they are claiming that this is not a subspace okay i can easily eliminate this option because this is a homogeneous system it's a homogeneous system i'll tell you i can rewrite like x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0 you can express this as if you look at the coefficients 1 x2 coefficient 1 x3 coefficient 1 this into x1 x2 x3 equal to what 0 this resembles like a into x equal to 0 where the coefficient matrix is so simple it contains 1 1 1 where the unknown uh, vector is x1 x2 x3 and the right side quantity is 0 therefore it's a homogeneous system just now or in our uh, when we learned about vector space when we learned about subspace we said all the solutions which satisfy ax equal to 0 the set of solutions from the homogeneous system will definitely form a subspace and he says that such solutions are not a subspace this is a false statement students it is false statement and then we have only two options to verify one is a other is b in a they say that the two vectors are uh, forming a basis in option b they say that they are independent but they do not form a uh, basis okay let's check that so how do you check that they gave only one equation here x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0 this is the given information now i can write x1 as minus x2 minus x3 let x2 so i'm trying to generate the basis for the given set so how do you do that so that's the process i'm showing you let x2 be equal to some constant called k1 let x3 be equal to some constant called k2 so now what is the value of x1 student it is minus k1 minus k2 so how does the solution look like how does the solution look like you can write your solution like this x1 x2 x3 how does the solution look like what is the value of x1 it is minus k1 minus k2 what is the value of x2 k1 what is the value of x3 k2 so this is how your solution looks like 
you can modify this or you can rearrange this. Suppose if I take k1 common, then this looks like minus 1, 1, 0. And then if you write this as k2, k2 times, then what is left over here? So, what is the coefficient of k2? It is minus 1 and then there is no k2 here, hence 0 and then k2 is there, so 1. So, every solution which satisfies x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0 should be created this way. You can now put whatever values of k1, k2 you want. So, all the solutions are generated with the linear combination of this vector and this vector. Now, I want to verify where whether these vectors are used or not, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. I see that 1, minus 1, 0 is there, 1, 0, minus 1 is there. But here I have minus 1, 1, 0. So, nothing to worry. You can also rearrange and you write this as minus k1, okay, minus k1 times 1, minus 1, 0, plus minus k2 times 1, 0, minus 1. Just to make this fit into our problem. So, now what I want to say is, whatever solutions you want, those solutions are the linear combination of this vector and this vector. You take any solution, that solution must be a linear combination of these two vectors. So, finally, what I can say is, with the help of 1, minus 1, 0, and then 1, 0, minus 1, we are able to generate all the solutions or we are able to generate the set called x. We need only this two, that is enough. Now, some students might misunderstand. Sir, are you taking this two and then spanning r power 3? Are, are, I am not spanning r power 3. I am just focusing on the set which satisfies all this equation. I mean, there is only one equation which satisfies this equation. You take any, any solution. For example, you want x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 0. Now, I can take x1 as 1, x2 as 2. So, this makes x3 as how much? Minus 3. You add it 1 plus 2 plus minus 3 is how much? It is 0. Now, can you get this solution, this kind of solution with these two vectors? Of course, I can get. So, what kind of solution you want? So, let us try to elaborate this. Fantastic problem actually. So, you need to know how to create a basis. Once you know how to create a basis, you can play with the problem. I need the solution called 1, 2, minus 3. 1, 2, minus 3. How can you generate 1, 2, minus 3 with the help of these two fellows? So, how to create that is? So, there is 0 here and then 2 here. So, I will say minus 2. Let us see what happens. I am just I'm not sure. I am trying. Okay, As a student, just like a student, I am trying. What, what happens if I multiply minus 2 with the first vector? And then I need minus 3. What happens if I multiply 3 to the second one? 1, 0, minus 1. If I do this kind of linear combination, will I get this vector 1, 2, minus 3? Let me check. This is minus 2 plus 3. What is minus 2 plus 3? It is plus 1. And then what is minus 2 into minus 1? It is 2 because 3 into 0 is gone. Next, minus 2 into 0 is gone. 3 into minus 1 is minus 3. Yes, this linear combination is giving you this. Like this, we have randomly generated the solution. Now, you would generate any solution student. For example, 1, 1, minus 2. Is this a solution? Because if you add x1 plus x2 plus x3, you must get 0. 1 plus 1, 2. 2 plus minus 2 is 0. So, can I get the solution with the help of this 2? Yes. Let me show how. So, I need minus 2 here. So, 2 has to be multiplied. So, 1, 0, minus 1. So, here I have 0, but here I have 1. So, minus 1 must be multiplied to the first vector. 1, minus 1, 0. Now, you can verify students. If you take the linear combination this way, you will definitely get this. So, what is the first component? Minus 1 plus 2. What is minus 1 plus 2? 1. Matching. Next, minus 1 into minus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. Matching. 
minus 1 into 0 is gone 0 2 into minus 1 is minus 2 matching why am i saying all this to convince you people that this with the help of these two vectors you can generate entire x which is mentioned here therefore these two vectors they are not only linearly independent, they also span the given set. Look students, I did not say that they span r power 3. No, no, no. The discussion is not about r power 3. The discussion is about x. It's a set of all vectors which satisfy this. Yes, these two vectors form a basis. These two form a basis. Do we have any option that way? 1 minus 1, 0. 1, 0 minus 1 is a basis for the subspace x yes it's a basis and he says that it is linearly independent but they do not span the given set this is wrong and this is also wrong and yes we got a correct statement the answer to this problem is option a let's go to the next problem this is a very a simple question let's see what are they talking about this if the vectors e1 e2 and e3 form an orthogonal basis for the three dimensional real space R3, then the vector u, which is 4, 3, minus 3, can be expressed as dash. So, for R power 3, they gave some orth orthogonal basis. That means they are linearly independent, they span R3, and they are also uh, perpendicular to each other. You take any two vectors, their dot product would be 0. Okay, that is not the question. The question is, how can you express u as linear combination of e1, e2, e3? Various options are given. I would like to go for the verification. Verification will be so simple. If I take this kind of linear combination, will I get 4, 3, minus 3? That's what I have to verify. Let's verify. Let's start with option A. In option A, they say it's minus 2 by 5 times e1, which is 1, 0, 2. And then minus 3 times e2, which is 0, 1, 0. And then minus 11 by 5 into e3, which is minus 2, 0, 1. This should give us how much? 4, 3, minus 3. If this is not giving, then that option is eliminated. Come on, try to simplify this. This is minus 2 by 5, 0, minus 4 by 5. And then plus minus 3, I am sending it inside, 0 minus 3 0 i'm sending minus 11 by 5 inside so plus it is plus because minus into minus is plus 22 by 5 okay and then 0 and then minus 11 by 5 add this and if you are able to get 4 3 minus 3 that's the answer let me add this is minus 2 by 5 and then this is 0 and then 22 by 5 how much is minus 2 plus 22 20 20 by 5, 4, Array, 4, yes, I am getting 4 here. Next, 0 plus minus 3 plus 0 is minus 3. Array, I almost got the answer. Array, no, 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 I did not get the answer. I should have got 3. So, yes, I can stop here, say that option A is gone. Option A is gone. Let me also check what is happening here. This is minus 4, this is minus 11. Minus 4, minus 11, minus 15. Minus 15 by 5 is minus 3. I don't want this. What I want is 4, 3, minus 3. That means there is no issue with this component. There is no issue with this. But this is the one which is creating the issue. That means I have to do some modification here. Option is eliminated and I also got a thought that minus 2 by 5 is working, minus 11 by 5 is working. Minus 2 by 5, minus 11 by 5 is working. Only thing is, instead of minus here, I should have a plus. So, this is eliminated. This is also eliminated. Like I said, everything is working except this component is not matching. So, this also eliminated. Uh, I want minus 11 by 5 here. There is plus 11 by 5. This is also eliminated. Now, if you verify, this option will definitely match. So, what's the difference, students? There is minus 2 by 5. Yes, minus 2 by 5. There is plus 3, but here... In our previous calculations, we took minus. So, you can change this to plus and then you will have plus 3 and then you will have plus 3. All other calculations are same. This is how I solve in the exam, saving plenty of time. So, you should know, you should learn from these skills how to solve the gate questions. Over, answer is option D. Now, the next two problems are little tricky. Not little, I can say... Uh, 
very very tricky i'll spend lot of time in explaining this so please give your 100% for this as well as for this problem you might have plenty of doubts all your doubts will mostly be cleared with this explanation so let's look at this question if v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 are six vectors in r power 4 they gave six vectors which are in r power 4 what are those elements they have not given just they have taken v1 v2 v uh, v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 to be vectors in r power 4 which of the following statements is false so our duty is to identify the statement which is false if v1 v3 v5 v6 spans r power 4 then it forms a basis for r power 4 suppose if v1 see what are v1 v2 no one knows what are v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 this they are all saying that given v1 v3 v5 span r power 4 then it forms a basis for r power 4 the moment you say four vectors are spanning r power 4 definitely they form a basis now see here students look at this i did not tell that they are spanning r power 4 he only said in the condition look if if there are four vectors v1 v2 v3 sorry v1 v3 v5 v6 clearly he is mentioning that v1 v3 v5 v6 spanning r power 4 there are four vectors which are spanning r power 4 the moment you say span so they are covering each and every point in r power 4 that's possible only when they are independent and then when they span entire r power 4 so definitely they form a basis this statement is a true statement true statement now when you come out of the option a so when you are in option a students so this is where most of the students confuse when you are in option a you have to treat v1 v3 v5 v6 spanning r power 4 we exactly don't know what are v1 v2 up to v6 but when you are looking at option a he says if if v1 v3 v5 v6 span r power 4 yes definitely they'll uh, they'll form a basis for r power 4 now i'm coming out from option a now i don't know what are v1 v2 up to v6 they can be any vectors but when you are looking at option a clearly says if if they span r power 4 yes they form a basis no doubt about that now let's come out of option a now when you come out of the option a no longer you can use v1 v3 v5 v6 to be spanning r power 4 you came out of the option a now let's read option b these vectors are not linearly independent <coughs> which vectors v1 v2 up to v6 are not linearly independent it seems let me check it how does v1 look when you say when you say v1 belongs to r power 4 how does v1 look like it has got how many components four components now i want to know whether they are linearly independent or not how many vectors are there six vectors are there i want to know whether they are linearly independent or not so obviously the rank approach have to use v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 I would like to club all of them. I want to know what is rank of this matrix. What is rank? What is V1? V1 has got four components like this. So you'll have four components like this, four components like this, four, so on. So how many rows it is going to have? It is going to have four rows. And how many columns are there? Six columns are there. So basically when you club them, it's a four cross six matrix. What is rank of a 4 cross 6 matrix the rank of a 4 cross 6 matrix is always less than or equal to minimum of 4 comma 6 we all know this now so now what is the conclusion the rank of a 4 cross 6 matrix is always less than or equal to what is minimum of 4 and 6 the minimum of 4 and 6 is 4 so now we are saying that v1 v2 with up to v6 if you club the rank is always less than or equal to 4 this rank will never be equal to 6 
Now, when the rank is 6, only then we can say that all are linearly independent. Right now, what we can say is maximum there can be 4 linearly independent vectors. But look at the option. The option says these vectors, that means this 6 vectors are not linearly independent. Yes. This 6 vectors can never be linearly independent because if you look at this 6 vectors, you can have maximum only 4 as linearly independent. All the 6 can never be linearly independent. Students, please try to understand. Now, when you say rank is less than or equal to 4, maximum there can be only 4 linearly independent vectors. But what are the given vectors? There are 6 vectors. Can the 6 vectors be linearly independent? If you want the 6 to be linearly independent, then you have to get rank as 6. Rank 6 is not possible. Hence, the 6 vectors are not linearly independent. They are not linearly independent. And the same thing this fellow is also saying. They are not linearly independent. Yes, it is a true statement. But our duty is to identify the statement which is false. So, do not touch this. Let us look at this. It is not necessary that these vectors span r power 4. So, it is not necessary that these vectors span r power 4. Very, very confusing. In option A, look at the statement, how the statement started. If v1, v3, v5, v6 span r power 4. If you take those vectors spanning r power 4, definitely v1, v3, v5, v6 are a basis for that. So, when you are in option A, you have to take V1, V3, V5, V6 spanning R power 4. When you come out of that, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6 can be any vectors. They need not span R power 4 because look at this, if is used. When you are on option A, take this kind of vectors only. Now, let us come to option C. Now, when you are talking about option C, so those vectors can be any vectors. They need not span R power 4. So, it is not necessary that these vectors span r power 4. So, for example, I am just giving you v1 which is 1, 0, 0, 0, v2 which is 2, 0, 0, v3 which is like 3, 0, 0 and then v4, 4, 0, 0. Sir, why did you take this vector, sir? because nothing is mentioned here, sir. Sir, can I take this four vectors in option A, sir? Not possible, sir. Four vectors, na? V1, V3, V5, V6. Those V1, V3, V5, V6 cannot be these vectors, sir, because they are not spanning R power 4, sir. I hope this is very, very clear. In the option A, you cannot take this as V1, you cannot take this as V3, you cannot take this as V5, you cannot take this as V6, because you have to take those vectors with span R power. So, this do not span r power 4. So, let us not talk about option A. Option is already discussed. Now, we are in option C. V1 to V6 can be any vectors. They can be even like this. Suppose if you take this, are they spanning r power 4? They are not spanning r power 4. Because if you see, these are all zeros. These are all zeros. You cannot cover a vector in r power 4 with the help of this. So, it's, there is, it is not necessary that these vectors span r power 4. This also is a true statement. Since it is a MCQ and you have decided that these are not your answers, so obviously this has to be your answer. Now what do what they say? Any four of these vectors form a basis for r power 4 it seems. Any four. For example, let us also write V5. Let us write V6. I have randomly taken this because there is nothing mentioned like what are v1, uh, v2 up to v6. So, I have taken like this. So, you take any four vectors. So, will they form a basis for r power 4? There is no, no. Suppose if you take vectors like this, they are not forming basis for r power 4. But he claims that any four of these vectors are forming a basis for r power 4. This turns out to be a false statement. So, you take any four of these vectors randomly. There is nothing, there is no condition that they need to form a basis. It is a false statement. Students, a very, very confusing problem. I have, uh, like, I have discussed this problem with many students. After the explanation, they again approach me with their doubts. Sir, uh, you have taken V1, V3, V5, V6 spanning R power 4. Why did you take, sir? Array, there is no, uh, I did not take 
he clearly said that in option here you take vectors which span r per 4 if you take such vectors which span r per 4 will they form basis yes they will form a basis you have to work with options you cannot uh, whatever options you are whatever you have used here you cannot use in other options so what is option b saying these vectors are not linearly independent there are six vectors now when i club them create a matrix the rank the maximum rank possible is four that means maximum only four linearly independent vectors are possible all the six cannot be linearly independent and he also says the same thing that's why it's a true statement next it is not necessary that these vectors span r per 4 you take vectors like this are they spanning r per 4 these are not spanning r per 4 so it's also a true statement and then he says any four of these vectors form a basis for r per 4 for example if someone has created uh, c there is nothing no condition there na you can take any six vectors. I have taken these six vectors. You randomly draw four vectors. Will they span R per 4? No. So, but they say that they are spanning R per 4. It's a false statement and this has to be the answer. I hope I have tried my level best in explaining this problem. Let's go to the next problem. If V1, V2 are four dimensional subspaces of sixth dimensional vector space V, then the smallest possible dimension of V1 intersection V2 is very confusing problem. V1 and V2 are four dimensional subspaces of a six dimensional vector space V. So basically there is a vector space called V whose dimension is six. You all know what is dimension. So the moment I say dimension, it refers to basis. So basis means a linearly independent spanning set for a given vector space. So there is a vector space called V whose dimension is 6. That means there are 6 vectors in that uh, basis. For example, let me take those 6 vectors like this. The columns of a 6 cross 6 identity matrix. This is the first vector in the basis. Have some patience. Like this, you write the six vectors. Okay. This is the fourth vector, na? So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Fifth vector. And the last vector, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1. Clearly, these are the columns of a 6 cross 6 identity matrix. Definitely, they will span the 6 dimensional vector space V. There is no doubt about that. Okay, so they are linearly independent and definitely they will span that. Let's assume, uh, let's assume that we are talking about R power 6. Yes, they span R power 6, no doubt about that. Now, what are V1, V2? V1, V2 are first of all the subspaces of this vector space. Subspace means subset. Subset and also they satisfy all the properties of a vector space. What is V1? It's a subset of this. What is V2? It's a subset of this which satisfies all the properties of a vector space. For example, let me create one V1. Let me take the first four vectors. 1, 0, 0, 0. So, you should take a subset of this. The first four vectors I am taking 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Next, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So, V1 is a subspace. It's a four-dimensional subspace. Sir, how did you tell it's a four-dimensional subspace, sir? Clearly, this is the basis for V1, sir. And how many vectors are there in V1, sir? Four vectors are there, sir. Now, what is V2? V2 is another four-dimensional subspace of this vector space. So, look how I'm going to create V2. Like you have taken the first four vectors. What I'll do is I'll take the next four. Like I'll avoid this. I'll take this four vectors into V2. You can create whatever 
uh, not only whatever I said, you can create any, uh, you can take any subset, which uh, you can draw any four vectors. That's what I want to say. You draw any four vectors from this. Like I am drawing, I left this, the next four I'm trying to draw. I need 4, okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, another 0, okay. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So, these are another 4 vectors. Clearly, V1, V2 are uh, subsets of V. Now, what is he asking? Then, the smallest possible dimension of V1 intersection V2 is, see here students, I have randomly taken V1, randomly taken V2. Now, can you tell us, in this particular discussion, in this particular discussion, what is V1 intersection V2? V1 intersection V2. What are the common elements? This is here, this is here, this is here, this is also here, this is here, this is also here. So, there are, I can see three common elements. So, for example, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 and the next common element is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Is this common? Yes. Uh, yes. Do we have this element here? No. Do we have this element here? No. That means this is the intersection. Students, for this particular case where you have generated V1 randomly, V2 also randomly you have calculated their intersection. The intersection is this. What is the dimension, students, here? What is dimension of V1 intersection V2? How many elements are there in this set, students? How many are there? Three are there. Three are there. Now, don't be tempted. Don't say the answer as three. Now, what they want is, if you randomly select V1, randomly select V2, or all the possible combinations, what could be the smallest dimension? What could be the smallest dimension? So, let me create another set. So, the previous discussion is completed. Here, I found the dimension to be 3. I need the smallest dimension. So, can I find the dimension to be 2? Can the dimension be 1? Can it be less than that? That's what I want to check. So, now, can you make the dimension as 4? Yes, I can make the dimension as 4. How? I will tell you. You take 4 vectors here. Na? The same 4 vectors, again you put it here. Then the dimension would be 4. That's not a big deal. Now, I don't look at the dimension called 4. I want a dimension. So, already I got a dimension as 3. Can I get a dimension 2? Or can I get even lesser than that? So, if you can get even lesser than that, then check it and then give the smallest possible dimension. So, I'll try. I'll try my level best. Again, I'll take the same 4 vectors. So, this time my interest is to make a dimension 2. So, let me check whether I will succeed or not. This is the third vector. Now, let me check the fourth vector 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So, as usual, V1, whatever I have taken earlier, I have taken V1 same. Now, I have to take V2 in such a way that can I get a dimension lesser than 3? Yes, let's try. Let's try. Let me uh, write V2. This is this is going to be different from the previous one. Now, how did you generate V2 earlier? You said you take this four vectors. Now, I'll cleverly create V2. Already for V1, we have taken the first four vectors. Now, the first four vectors are already selected, and I want the dimension to be smaller and smaller. So, if you want smaller and smaller. These are unused so far because in V1, the first four are used. These are unused. So, let me put those things. The last two vectors 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, let us say 1 here and then 0. Let this be a vector in V2 and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1. This is another vector. So far, there are two vectors, but I need two more. I need two more. Nah, I need two more. From where will you get two more? Already, this two have been put here. 
I need two more. So from where the other two will be like taken. So obviously the other two have to come from this four. The other two should definitely come from this four. Which four? So the last two are already part of the V2 here. The other two should be either I mean any of this among the four you have to definitely select two. For example, if I select the first two, two first two, two, one, zero, 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 I have taken the first two, two, next zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Now in this case, what is the dimension, the dimension of V1 intersection V2? Do we have any common elements? Let me underline those common elements. I can find this here. You can find it here. You can find this here. You can find this here. How many elements are common? There are two elements common. That means, yes, we can have the dimension of V1 intersection V2 to be 2. So my next question is, can we have a dimension to be 1? Is that possible? Can you try it? So for that, again, what you will do? You will take V1. You take any four vectors from the V. So let's say the four vectors are like this. And then you want to create or you want a dimension to be 1. Is it possible? So since all these four are already used, my focus is first to pick this two. So I have picked this. Now I have to put two more. I have to because V2 is also a four dimensional subspace. It will contain four vectors. Now what could be the two other vectors? The two other vectors should either be from any of this four. That means again you get two vectors from this making the dimension to be two. You cannot go uh, below two. You cannot have dimension of V1 intersection V2 as one that's not possible. The smallest dimension possible in this question is 2. I hope you have got this idea. It's also an excellent problem. Already you have selected this 2. Uh, already you have selected this 2 from this 2. So for sure, from this 4 vectors, you have to pick any 2. So when you do that, the dimension. So the moment you say pick any 2, those 2 will also be here. Hence, V1 intersection V2 will be 2. You cannot go below 2. You can have dimension 3, you can have dimension 4, but you cannot have dimension as 1. Therefore, the smallest dimension, here the question is about smallest dimension. So students, what is the smallest dimension? The smallest dimension is 2 and this is the answer for the question.